So if you could stand with me for a minute, amen. From the book of Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6, and of course to all of your other officers of this church, amen, God bless you tonight. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 to 14. And your theme was just there a while ago. Can you, I think it's standing on the abounding power of God. Standing on the abounding power of God. So Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 to 14. I'll read in your hearing. It reads on this wise. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Can you say stand? Verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places verse 13 wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand can you say stand stand therefore can you repeat stand therefore stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. And I'm going to turn to one other passage of scripture. 2 Samuel 23. 2 Samuel 23. Verse 8 through 12. And again I'll read in your hearing. Second Samuel 23, verse 8 to 12. These be the names of the mighty men whom David had. Tokmanite that sat in the seat, chief among the captains. The same was Adino, the Esnite. He lift up his spear against 800 whom he slew at one time. And after him was Eliezer, the son of Dodo, the, ah the Ahohite, one of the three mighty men with David. When they defied the Philistines that were there, gathered together to battle. And the men of Israel were gone away. He arose and smote the Philistines until his hand was weary and his hand clave unto the sword, and the Lord wrought a great victory that day. And the people returned after him only to spoil. And after him was Shammah, the son of Aji, the Hararite. And the Philistines were gathered together into a troop. There was a piece of ground full of lentils. And the people fled from the Philistines. And the last verse. But he stood in the midst of the ground and defended it. And slew the Philistines and the Lord, and the Lord wrought a great victory. Bow your heads with me just for a moment here. Father, we bless you. We thank you. We thank you, Lord God, for your mighty work. We thank you, Lord God, for... 32 years of ministries thank you for 32 years of success thank you lord god for 32 years of souls being baptized in water in jesus name souls being filled with the power of the holy ghost and the lord god we know oh god that you're not done we know lord god that you're going to multiply even more than you did before and father as we stand tonight oh god to speak on your behalf 
we pray lord god that you will give your servant oh god complete utterance i pray lord god that your words will come easily i pray that your words will go forth with power i pray lord god that the hearts oh god and the minds oh god that will hear tonight will be receptive to your word father i pray that you will oh god empower your children oh god that they shall go forth and do valiantly in the kingdom of god we bless you we thank you and we magnify your name in Jesus name we pray and you say amen amen and you may be seated seated in the in seated in the presence of the Lord amen and tonight for our topic amen stand your ground stand your ground stand your ground stand your ground man this book of ephesians was written by the apostle paul I mean, just a bit of background and paul was in a roman prison around 861 when he wrote these words he wrote this particular letter and it's a letter, oftentimes we read the epistles or the writings in the New Testament, especially those to churches, and we refer to them as book. But they're not a book. They are actual letters that were written by the authors. And Paul wrote this particular letter to inform the church about its standing in God. There seems that there was no clear indication that this particular letter was one that was only sent or it was a private letter to the Ephesians um, some scholars or theologians or scholars believe that it was more of a circular letter one that was shared with all the churches at that time so it would be copied and it would be shared with others and it is said to be circular because the context or the content of the of the letter I mean is something that could shared could be shared with all the churches at that time. So in this letter, Paul explains, amen, clearly to the church some fundamental principles of the kingdom of God that they should not neglect. And one of those principles he outlines in chapter 1 of this particular epistle. In verse 3 he says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Blessed be God, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in Christ, according as he hath chosen us in him, before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. And verse 5, having escaped, having predestined us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. I'm going to read also verse 13. In whom you also trusted after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you believed, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. So he mentions here that what they are enjoying is a blessing from God. He mentions to them, praise God, and that's why, to a large degree, this letter, this message had to be shared with all the churches because everyone in the church shared the same experience. Everyone in the church, praise God, uh, wasn't there because of their own uh, decision and their own choices, but they were part of the church because God did something for them before. And he says in verse 4, according as he hath chosen you, amen, praise God. So everyone, all of us, 
the Corinthians, the Ephesians, the Galatians, the Colossians, and the list can go on. All of us, praise God, are where we, were, where we are in the kingdom of God because we were chosen by God. God went through a selection process. The word says many are called, but few are chosen. Now, isn't it great? Isn't it fantastic? Amen. Praise God to know that you know, among all the millions or the billions in the world that God selected you, praise God, from everybody else. He chose you. And not only that, he didn't choose you or I because of how we looked based on the families that you came from. He wasn't looking for people that came from a religious background or a rich background or a, you know, a lofty background, a royal background. No, but God chose you even before you were born. Before our parents had thought about, about us, God chose you. God selected you, praise God. So understand that you are where you are. We are where we are today because God went through a very selective process. To choose you. It wasn't a vote like we have elections. He didn't ask the angels, who do you think? But no, in his infinite wisdom, his own prerogative, God chose you. Take this personal that God shows you. That you're where you are today. Because God chose you. And he didn't just choose you. He says that you're chosen in, in him before the foundation of the world. Why? That you, we should be holy and without blame before him. So many of us believe that the Christian life is difficult. Some may think, well, if I had to do it again, maybe I wouldn't choose to serve the Lord. But I'm glad that everyone that is here tonight said yes to the Lord because even the idea of coming to, to God was a decision, was a, uh, a word that God placed in your mouth. It wasn't our decision, but God placed yes in your heart. He placed it in your heart for you to say yes. But why? Because he, he had a plan. He says he chose you, amen, to be holy. And we're living sometimes as if, well, life is so hard. Being a child of God is so hard. Living in this world is so hard. With the economic situation, life is so hard. But amidst the hardness, amidst the trials, amidst the, amidst the tests that you have, you have to go through, understand that God's purpose and God's plan is to make you holy. Because without holiness, no one will see the Lord. And certainly you're not there yet. We're not there yet. But God is working on you. God is working inside of you. God is working around you. Because he, he made a promise in his word to make you holy. And God's word doesn't fail. So even though you may, it may feel difficult, even though sometimes you feel like giving up, but don't give up, church. Don't give up. You have, I think later on, yes, he says here in verse 5, having predestined us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ. So he wasn't just a selection from among others, but he also predest adopted you into his family. Praise God. I mean, Queen Elizabeth's family, if they had to choose people to be part of their family, they wouldn't look in Ottawa. They wouldn't look at your address. Praise God. We would not be worthy. But Jesus, but God adopted you and you and you and you into his family. His royal family. And understand that the family of God is bigger, greater, and better than King Queen Elizabeth or Charles's family. And any other king or prince in Saudi Arabia or in Morocco. God's family is better than that. It's a high calling. The word of God says that we, we live in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. 
The fact that you are of royal descent doesn't mean that you are absent from suffering. You're absent from pain. But praise God, I encourage you that even in your pain, even in your suffering, always remember who you are. Remind yourself, I am from royal stock. I am a child of the living God. And the devil may come against you one way or seven ways. But remember, you're a child of God. And God will fight for you. God will come to, praise God, to your rescue at any time. But, child of the king, but you are not, we are not immune from pain and from suffering. Because our father, our brother Jesus, went through the same process. In a few days, we're going to celebrate Passion Week and the, and the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. And so, like Paul says later on, I think in, in Philippians, I think it's Philippians, that I may know him. In the power. That I may be made conformable unto his death. The fellowship of his sufferings. And the power of his resurrection. That I may conform to what caused him to die. Share in the, in the suffering that he went through. But raised up with power as he did. There is no powerful resurrection without going through, praise God, the fellowship of suffering. Praise God. And sometimes, sometimes we feel as if, praise God, we, we're, we're dying. We feel as if, praise God, that the, we can't resurrect from the from the debt that we're in right now. Sometimes we feel as if, praise God, the, the, the sickness that's upon us, praise God, we can't recover. But I want to remind you, praise God, that Jesus did raise Lazarus from the dead. And he didn't just die one day or two days. He was dead for at least four days before Jesus came. So your situation, whatever it may be, whatever the doctors may have said about you, praise God, it's just an example, a means for God's power to be demonstrated in your life. So don't look down, praise God, and say, why am I suffering this way? I mean, I left from sin. I left from the world to come to the church because I thought my life would be better. And your life is better. Look, look, look at it. Look back at your life. And what you're going through before, what you, who was against you before. But your, our lives is still better now than what it was before. But it doesn't consist of just right now. God still has more in store for you. So Paul reminds us that we are chosen. And that we were chosen from the foundation of the world. And that we are ordained, praise God, to live holy. Amen. Because we're reminded, John says, his partner, praise God, in ministry. Beloved, now we are the sons of God. Right now, you are a son and a daughter of God. It doesn't look, we don't look like what we should be. We don't look holy sometimes. You know, we may, we may sometimes we fast and we pray for days and after fasting for a week or 10 days or whatever number of days, we feel powerful, we feel better. We feel spiritual zest and power. But really, we're still not there yet. It does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when the Lord shall appear, in a moment in the twinkling of God, we shall see him as he is. And we shall change, praise God, from mortal to immortality. This corruption will put on incorruption. This mortal immortality, church, that is the promise of God. That's what we're looking forward to. So whatever you're going through, whatever you're experiencing, stand your ground. Stand your ground, praise God. Stand your ground. Change is inevitable, praise God. There's changing are happening around us all the time, praise God. There are things that are changing that we, we don't want to change. Glory to God. I'm sure that pastor loved her. What's number four? Number four? Number four? Number three? Number four? <laughs> number two? Three. Okay. She loves you. <laughs> she loved her number three when he was three. I'm sure she'd have wished that he would never grow up 
because he was a peculiar child. But if he stayed at three, she wouldn't have the benefits that she has today. Sometimes we have to embrace change because if we don't adapt to change, we can't progress, we can't get better, praise God. The weather is changing. The last, this past winter, everybody thought it would be like maybe the year before, the five years before, but the weather changes, praise God. Places where there was snow, there is no snow. Places where there was no snow, where there was snow, I confused myself. So places where there was no snow, there is snow. It snows so often these days in, in, in Texas and in New Mexico. And places that had snow, like here, we have less snow. Praise God. Governments are changing. The moral standards are being changed every single day. There are laws, praise God, to, to, to change things that have stood as foundational. Praise God. The currency goes up. The currency comes down. Praise God. And based on what somebody says, what was prohibited, what, what was prohibited last year, this year it's allowed and it's more popular, it's more in demand. People that we once relied upon and trusted today are uncommitted and we question who they really are. But one thing that never changes, one thing that is unchangeable, and that is God and his word. What God meant a thousand years ago, he still means today. The power of God that, that was upon Abraham or David 2,000, 3,000 years ago, it's the same power that indwells us. God doesn't change. So if we, if we want to hold on to anything that is firm, that is secure, that, is, that pays dividends, we have to hold on to God's word. Because man's word changes. I will tell elder, I love him today. And tomorrow I'll be talking to somebody about him. And that's what the people did around Jerusalem to Jesus. On Sunday, we celebrate Palm Sunday. And as he came into Jerusalem, they're crying out, oh, Hosanna. Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Praise God. They're taking off their, some of their clothing and they're putting them on the ground for him to ride upon. They're waving palm leaves. But five, six days later on, crucify him. Crucify him, praise God. We are changeable. Our minds today, what we think today is not what we want to do tomorrow. But God keeps his word. Glory to God. Glory to God. A popular statement made by, made by pundits, in, especially in the political arena, is where do you stand? They ask the question, where do you stand? And it's usually followed by some, some, some statement of some fact. Like, where do you stand on capital punishment? Where do you stand on abortion? Where do you stand, praise God, on climate change, as an example? Capital punishment. People are always stating, praise God, are asking questions about where we stand. They want to understand where, what our stand is, praise God. As children of God, we also need to know on what we stand. What do we stand for? What do we stand for? And we must, the word of God says we must have, we must always bear in mind that we should have an opportunity, have, have something to say about the word of God. Why we believe what we believe. Why we do what we do. Why do we go to church on a Sunday? Why do we pray on a Wednesday? There has to be a reason, praise God. We should be able to stand equivocally, unshakable when it comes to God's word. Standing to me means this. It means to be in readiness. It means to be, praise God, to be prepared. It means to be absolute. Ab standing means to be decisive, to be resolute. It means, I mean, where do you, where are you right now? That's, to me, that's what it means to stand. I said again, standing means to be resolute. It's a, it's a statement of readiness. It's a statement of preparedness. Praise God. 
you have to make a decision as to what you stand on. You have to make a decision. The children of God must know where we stand, on what we stand, and for who we stand. The child of God must know where they stand, on what we stand, and for who we stand. The phrase, stand your ground, amen, is a statement also used in the United States. There are certain states, they have laws. It's called stand your ground. And it's, it's in reference to a law that permits a person to use deadly force in self-defense without first trying to retreat. In other words, stand your ground means that if someone threatens your property, your person, amen, comes on your property uninvited, you have the right to defend yourself with, le with lethal force. It's a law, I believe, in, in Florida and in uh, Texas. Stand your ground. Stand your ground. Under the guise of self-defense, stand your ground laws allow a person to use firearm to shoot and kill another person anywhere at any time. I believe that law treats visitors on, in an unfavorable manner, praise God. I believe the law is somewhat unfair. Maybe things are different in the United States of America, but here, I know in Ottawa, people come on your property all the time. They drop it off flyers, pamphlets, whatever, knocking at your door, wanting to talk to you. Now, if we had that same law here, if someone shows up on our property, we can just shoot and ask questions after. I mean, but, that, but sometimes, I mean, how, how terrible that would be. But that's the law in some states. Now, another term that is similar to stand your ground is hold your ground. And I know that in the military, It's a term that they use oftentimes. Soldiers are taught that when they go into battle, when the commander in chief, when the general says, I mean, stand your ground or hold your ground, they can't retreat. You gotta stay where you are. The enemy may be facing you, coming towards you with their, with their artillery, but when you hold your ground, you stand your ground. You're not looking to retreat. You're not looking to go backwards. Praise God. But you are prepared even to advance forward. So when you hold your ground, you are prepared to go forward. Forward. As children of God, we are likened to soldiers. It says we are soldiers in the army. Praise God. And we're never looking backwards, but always going forward. Amen. Praise God. Paul wrote this letter to the Christians in the early church, whether it was in Ephesus or in Philippi or in Corinth. Praise God. And he wrote using terms that was um, familiar with uh, battle f warfare at that time. Because they lived in a time where the Romans ruled the world. The same way today we would say that the USA is the biggest world power. But I'm sure there's some countries that may question that. But for the, for the most part, everyone believes that USA is the biggest world power. And so was the case in that time. The Romans were the truly the world leaders and the world power. So Paul uses terms that the people were familiar with. Because when the Romans came against them, when the Romans came against them and their commander-in-chief says, hold your ground. There was a time, I think around AD 70, when, when the Jews thought that they could fight against or rebel against the Romans. But the Romans were trained soldiers and of course uh, the Jews were, were, were uh, pheasants or farmers. They were unused to war. And as a result, because of their state, I mean, compared with the Romans, they, 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 they lost the battle. They lost the battle. And, for the, and I believe at the same time, Jerusalem was destroyed. And it 
hardly was recovered until many years later on. As soldiers in the army of the Lord, church, we must stand our ground. Amen. The enemy, praise God, is going to come against you. The enemy is going to do anything, praise God, to, to pull you backwards and to pull you back to the mindset that you had before you came to Christ. Amen. When people, praise God, come against you, when, when your old friends come and tell you that, praise God, that you're only a wishy-washy Christian. When your friends come and tell you, praise God, that you're only serving God because he's been good to you. Even you, you still have to stand on the word of God. Still stand on what you believe. That God is your provider. That God is your strength. Understand that the devil may try to give you things, or he may give you things, but whatever he gives you, glory to God, it's only temporary. But understand Understand that the word of God tells us that the Lord Jesus says, I'm gone. Amen. Praise God ahead of you. I'm gone to prepare a place for you that where I am there you may be also. Understand, church, that you will have to go through struggles. Understand that we are in a war fear. That the devil, amen, praise God, is on a war path. He's looking for victims, praise God. But each one of us, glory to God, we can't be like the American state, amen, in Florida or, or Texas. We must assess every threat that comes against us. Amen. In the U.S praise God. They start to shoot first and ask questions maybe later on. But you can't just even praise God start shooting. But you have to assess what is the devil doing? What is he trying to do in my life? But whatever he tries to do, whatever he says, I encourage you to stand your ground. Do not retreat. Do not give up. Praise God. But keep going forward. Amen. Praise God. You may lose a limb. Praise God. You may lose a job. You may lose some investment. But stand your ground. Hold on to your faith. Hold on to what you believe in. The word of God tells us that David had some mighty men around him. Praise God. And it's the same thing for you and I. You have to have the right people around you. As a soldier in the army of the Lord. That every brother or every sister that sits on the pew with you mean you any good. It's hard to say that. But the devil has planted his spies in the church. Some people in the church that are huge for what God wants to give. But they're here, praise God, to take away what God is planting in you. So choose your friends wisely. Choose, praise God, who you will serve. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. Assess. Amen. The threat that the enemy sends against you. Glory to God. Don't just start fighting and say words. Praise God. Uncontrollable. But understand whatever you're going to say. And do like what Jesus said when he was fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. The word of God lets us know that Satan came. Praise God. After he has fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. That's when he was tempted. Church, seven days fasting. Hardly does anything. Glory to God. But when you really want to make it in the kingdom of God, the devil will come against you. I mean, with any weapons that he can. But you must stand your ground. Assess the threat. What is he doing today? I mean, examine every word that you hear from individuals. That everything that people say to you is meant to lift you up. Sometimes the devil sends subliminal messages, glory to God. Somebody says something to you and you hear something else. And all of a sudden, glory to God. Because you have not been standing on the word of God. Because you have been praying as you should. Amen. We become sensitive about what people are saying to us. And all of a sudden, glory to God, we want to jump from the church. We want to go back to what we were before. But I encourage you tonight, stand your ground. Stand your ground. Amen. Because God will fight your battles. Amen. God will stand with you. The devil, praise God, is not for you. I mentioned before, he may give you things. Hallelujah, God. But he gives it to you just to bait you, praise God, to see what you're going to do. What God gives, whatever God gives to you, it is for you. It is for you. Glory to God. Stand your ground. Stand your ground. Stand your ground. Stand your ground. Don't retreat, but stand your ground. Defend your territory. The word of God tells us that David, one of his mighty men, Shammah, praise God, 
when the Philistines came against him, amen, he was on a parcel of land, glory to God. Just some, some, some land with some, all there was was some vegetation. But because it was his, it was his territory. It was his vegetable garden, praise God. He didn't want the Philistines to take it away from him. And the Bible says that, amen, he withstood them on his territory. Glory to God. Church, it doesn't matter how small it is. Whatever God has given to you, whatever God has blessed you, maybe he has called you just to help out somebody else in the church. But God has called you. Praise God. Don't stop helping. Don't let others tell you. You've been in the church for 30 years. You were in Jubilee from the time it began. And all they want you to do is just be an usher at the back, praise God. No one calls you to the front to say anything. Hold on to your gift of helps, praise God. Don't let the devil, praise God, inveigle you out of it, praise God. It's a body. We are a bo the body of Christ. And every, every member in the body has its function. Whatever God has called you to do, praise God. Do it with all of your strength, with all of your might. Don't look left. Don't look right. It doesn't matter who came last year, praise God, and has the mic. But do what God has called you to do. Stand your ground. Defend your territory, praise God. Know who you are in Christ. If we understand who we are, if we know who we are, Praise God. It doesn't matter what the devil says. Praise God. We will stand our ground. Because everybody was has been chosen by God. Everyone is ordained to be holy. Praise God. Everyone will get the same pay. Glory to God. So whether you have the mic in your hand or you're cooking in the kitchen, do it to the glory of God. Stand your ground. Stand your ground. Glory to God. Defend your territory. Shama fought for his vegetable garden. Glory to God. The Bible says, until the Philistines retreated. Amen. You can be mighty. You can be mighty in the, in the kingdom of God by doing what you're called to do. Glory to God. In assessing threat that comes against you remember that the devil has come he's coming to rob to kill and to destroy but God has given you power God has given you power the, the theme says stand on the unbounding power of God Stand on the unbounding power of God. Stand on what God has given you. Stand on what God has says to you. Stand on what God has said in his word. Amen. The devil is deceptive. The devil is cunning. You can't trust the devil. You can't trust, amen, his promises. Glory to God. Because all he wants to do is to rob you of what God has given to you. God has given you power to thread upon the head of the enemy. God has equipped you, praise God, with an armor. Amen. That cannot be penetrated by the devil's darts or spear. God has clothed you fully, praise God. Paul says, take on or put on the whole armor of the Lord. Don't leave any area of your life unprotected. He goes in great detail to tell us what each part of that armor does for us. So we can be fully covered. And when we are fully covered, glory to God, and we go in the name of Jesus, you will triumph. We will triumph, glory to God. But stand your ground. Stand your ground. If you, as I mentioned before, if you need to form a prayer band with somebody that you can trust, praise God, well, do that. 
If you need to tighten your, res your resolve to live for the Lord, well, do that. But whatever you do, keep fighting. Be relentless about what you believe in the Word of God. Be relentless, praise God, to fight for what is yours. And yours is the kingdom of God. Yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Your faith is worth fighting for. Your family is worth fighting for. Your church is worth fighting for. Your life is worth fighting for. So fight on, church. Fight on. Stand your ground. Stand your ground. Turn and tell your neighbor, stand your ground. Tell your other neighbor, stand your ground. Sometimes we just need to hear somebody else encourage us in the Lord, praise God. Because sometimes it seems like the walls are moving in on you, praise God. And it seems you have no strength to resist, but stand your ground. Stand your ground. They that trust in the Lord shall be like Mount Zion. That can't be removed. You can't, no man can pick up a mountain and move it from one place to another. Glory to God. Unless God motivates you through his power to do that. But so is your faith. Your faith should, our faith should be like a mountain. It should be unmovable. It should be rigid, praise God. Our determination to serve God should be unmovable, praise God. Amen, praise God. Whatever comes your way, we should say to ourselves, I will stand on the word of God. I will stand for God. Amen, you have come this far. Amen, praise God. We'll keep going farther. I guarantee you, church, if you keep going farther, farther if you keep pushing more I mean there will be more pushback but understand every day if you push a little praise God you'll get a bit closer to the Lord I mean you will we'll reach a bit closer the coming of the Lord will be sooner but keep pushing keep standing your ground defend your territory praise God and don't stress about the things that you can't control don't stress about the people praise God that you can't control because we have one enemy praise Praise God. And he's the one that we have to, uh, praise God, assess his threats, praise God, and fight against. Uh, because the word of God says we're not fighting against flesh and blood, uh, but against principalities, uh, spiritual wickedness in high places, uh, against the rulers of darkness of this world. That's the enemy. The enemy is not your brother or your sister. So assess what is wrong. Assess who is wrong. But stand your ground, praise God. When you use the tool tools that God has given to you. You've got the power of the Holy Ghost on the inside. You've got the ability to call on the name of Jesus in the midst of trouble and he will deliver you. Praise God. Amen. We heard the wonderful testimony tonight about what God did 32 years ago. Praise God. Even if there was no dream, if there was no vision, if there was no tenacity, if there was no perseverance, praise God, where would you be tonight? If somebody didn't come after you, where would you be tonight? Somebody stood their ground. Somebody knew, praise God, in the God that they believe. Somebody, praise God, understood that there's people to be saved. There's people who don't know who God is and they need to know. They need to experience, praise God, the power of God, the power of the Holy Ghost. They need to know, praise God, that life does not consist of just living in sin but God praise God has prepared a holy body for you glory to God and if you live holy if you live right praise God if you stand your ground you will inherit the blessings of the Lord stand stand your ground stand your ground stand your ground praise God don't be pushed away praise God from God, where God has placed you don't be pulled away, praise God, from the foundation that has been laid in your heart. Amen, praise God. God is faithful. God is faithful. God will keep his word. As night follows day, God will keep his word to you. But stand your ground. Stand your ground. 
if you're on the Lord's side tonight and you are determined to stand your ground, determined to press on forward, won't you stand with us tonight, praise God? Or if you need prayer, won't you come, praise God? Won't you come? Where do you stand tonight? Where do you stand? Are you standing just on the premises? Or are you desiring to stand on the promises of God? Stand your ground. Stand your ground. Praise God. I think that that um, little exercise that I think folks do sometimes. exactly how it works but if you stand just firm in, a, in one place and somebody try to push you over with one finger they can't do it praise God can't do it it takes a lot of force I mean, when you're planted firm on the ground praise God and we need to make sure that our faith in God is just planted in him praise God we got to send down roots praise God the first psalm says blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly nor stand in the ways of sinners but his delight is in the law of the Lord and in his law does he meditate day and night and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth his fruit in its season he says the ungodly are not, are not like these be planted be planted plant yourself where you can get nourishment from God plant yourself praise God where you can get the word in season and out of season but whatever you do stand your ground stand stand your ground stand your ground